Okay, so d we're down here in, uh, in the second part of the duodenum. Um, we're using the Pentax deck duodenoscope with a single-use cap and, uh, and bridge. We're using uh, Boston uh, Dream Tone with a, a long 450 centimeter jag wire down the short port. We're using a long wire uh, because we may be doing uh, pancreatoscopy here. Uh, okay, so uh, first question is, well, what orifices are we looking at there? Um, this chap has had previous intervention. I think it's very likely that at 12 o'clock there we're seeing a previous biliary sphincterotomy and then at sort of 4 o'clock is likely to be the pancreatic orifice. So that's what I'm going to go for. I could push the scope in a little bit. Yeah, okay. Let's just see where that see where that's going. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that's going along the pancreatic duct there. Uh, good, that's fine. Um, let's... Um, all right, so that wire is nicely along uh, the pancreatic duct. It's crossing the spine, so it's certainly in the pancreatic duct. We don't. So you can just see these these pancreatic stone debris coming out. Um, uh, one of the problems with removing uh, pancreatic duct stones um, is that you know, whereas in the bile duct, if you can get above a stone. Uh, you know, you can often, with a balloon, just draw the stone out uh, down the bile duct. Because of side branches, those stones can then slip sideways into those uh, uh, side branches, and it may, means that balloon extraction is often less effective than one would hope and expect. Okay, so we're just... I just want to define the anatomy a little bit further here. Particular things I want to know here are... Uh, is there a stricture uh, between the papilla and those stones? Crucial question. Okay, we're going to gently inject there, please. Yeah, what we can see is a lot of stone debris there. Yeah, so that's a good view of the pancreatic duct there. Dilated pancreatic duct, lots of stones within it, that's for sure. And those stones really go quite a long way down, don't they? Uh, the balloon drops out quite reasonably there, so I, I don't think there's a tight stricture there. Yeah, before we do spy, I'm just going to uh, perform a, a balloon dilatation of the sphincter. Um, so, putting a little bit of contrast in this uh, um, Cook Titan uh, 40 by 6 millimeter balloon, and then we're attaching the inflation device, and we are inflating to 11 atmospheres. Take that for me, please. I think the same rules apply as, uh, uh, as apply in the bile duct with... Uh, balloon sphincteroplasty. We never do it without having done a prior sphincterotomy unless there's an absolute contraindication to sphincterotomy. Uh, we never dilate the balloon wider than the duct upstream of the sphincter. And we do our very best to be sure that there isn't a hard stone between the balloon and the, the wall. Okay, so I'm just gonna take, take this out. Stone material coming out on the end of the balloon going to now do another balloon trawl, see if that balloon sphincteroplasty has uh, made it a little bit easier to draw out some of the, uh, the stones. Um, can we blow up to nine millimetres, please? Nine. Yep. Can you come out with that? That's good. That's Look at all those uh, pancreatic stone debris. Screen, please. Protonaceous stones. Uh, not, not so far the absolute rock-hard stones that we sometimes see with uh, uh, in, in chronic pancreatitis. Just going to see if I can get a view behind there. So what I'm going to do is, is push the scope in a little bit to get a view of the body of the pancreas. Uh, and to do that, I've taken my locks off um, and I'm going to do anti-clockwise torque and gently push in. Screen, please. So that's giving me a nice view of the, uh, the duct. Uh, yeah, uh, up, up again, please. Now, the problem here is that that stone can't get above it with the balloon. Um, and the risk is the more I try to get above it, the more I will impact it up in the, li uh, up in the pancreatic duct. So I think that we are going to need to use spyglass here to get that stone. We've done pretty well otherwise, actually, I have to say. So we're leaving the wire in place. And we're now going with the... Uh, Spyglass. So we're in the duodenum now with the Spyglass DS2, um, well, we call it a cholangioscope, but here it's um, playing the role of a pancreatoscope. So here we are. 
here we are in the main pancreatic duct. Put contrast in the duct, uh, you get a sort of wavy appearance and you lose the quality of the view for a bit. So I've sucked out the fluid now. Um, okay, good. Yeah. Okay, uh, thanks. Yeah, lovely view, amazing view. One of the interesting things, and again, I'd be, I'd be interested to know the, the view of others, uh, Amrita and, and others, um, always surprises me a bit how uninteresting the, um, the mucosa of, of the pancreatic duct in chronic pancreatitis often looks. You think that it would, you know, be inflamed and angry and it, 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 it often looks utterly bland like this. So I'm just going in with the, uh, the electrohydraulic lipotripsy probe. Here we go. There we are. Good. Okay. So we, we, uh, we want to be a little bit short of the stones when we do this. But are we connected up? Yeah, yeah, there's 15 and medium. 15 and medium. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so let's just see how we get on. There we are. Bang. There we are. Good. Yeah, I think that's the main stone that's causing trouble. It, I don't think it's too hard, but uh, let's see. Yeah, this is certainly the more stubborn bit of stone, isn't it? We used to say that one can only really do these, you know, endotherapy for stones in the head of the pancreas, but I, I think provided the pancreatic duct is dilated, you know, we're, we can go well as far in as one needs to, really, with all the usual cautions to be careful. and. Um, but, it, but the important thing being a dilated duct. It's like popcorn, this one, doesn't it? But, but slightly gratifyingly, I does not always see this, these, these fragments are breaking up very nicely. If you've got a patient with a, a stone that you know has got a Hounsfield index of more than a thousand, it can be terribly frustrating that you get right on the stone and it's like a, a lump of marble or granite. One needs to be careful to avoid the wall of the duct. But I have to say, in I don't know five or six hundred cases, we've we've fortunately never had a uh, a wall injury, a perforation, or a bleed. So you can see we're, we're right at the tail uh, out at the tail of the pancreas. Here. One thing that can be difficult, well I mentioned it earlier, is getting above a stone to remove it and. It might be that what we're going to need to use here is the uh, spy basket. Do we have a spy open basket? the basket? Yeah, that's good, that's good, that's good. Okay, that's good, that's fine. Okay, so let's going to see if we can get, use this basket just to get around this. Okay, just close, slowly close. Yeah, stop there. Yeah, so I think that's been useful actually. So I, I managed to catch that stone and I can just very carefully come back, probably most sensible to actually bring this out and then I recannulate. So it's just a bit of a bit of debris on the wall there, not really stones as we get into the lower duct. Uh, but this is a slightly harder stone than the other bits for some reason. So we're just going to bring that out through into the, uh, into the duodenum. No, I mean, in fact, the stone's dropped off. It's probably that bit there, which is fine. Okay, good. Um, uh, let's blow up to nine millimeters, please. And let's inject. Screen, please. So these are the fragments after uh, electrohydraulic lithotripsy. Yeah, great result. Look at that. Wow. Screen. Gently inject. Okay, so take that for me. I think those stones, that stone that was impacted up there, I think is now clear, which... Yeah, down with the balloon. I have a bit of a rule of thumb, utterly non-evidence based. Always do two clear trawls um, before, before stopping. Take that for me. I think that's a really good result. Um, now, I suppose there's a question. He's had three or four ERCPs in the past and after every ERCP he has had a pancreatic stent put in. Um, and that is, I think, pretty standard after endoscopic therapy. I think that a uh, prophylactic pancreatic stent here is, uh, is indicated. Quite interesting that beforehand he was talking about the hassle. In fact, when he was in the US, his insurance did not cover him to return to have, the, uh, to have a pancreatic stent removed. Nevertheless, particularly in these COVID times, 
if we put in uh, a standard plastic five friend credit stent, he will need to come back to the hospital in 10 days to have an x-ray if he falls into the 15 to 20 percent of people in whom a prophylactic pancreatic stent does not spontaneously migrate he will then need to come back for an endoscopy to have that removed that in these covid times uh, means that he would need to have another covid swab and exposed to the implications of coming to the hospital and having a procedure so here we're using a biodegradable Archimedes stent, uh, six French, six centimetres, which avoids the need to uh, return for stent removal. There are different durations of stent biodegradability. Here we really just want to bridge him over the next coming days to avoid post DRCP pancreatitis. This isn't a therapeutic stent, um, and so this uh, this stent is predicted to biodegrade within about 11 days or so. We're using a, it's a six French stent, we're using a five French uh, pusher. Okay, just coming through now. Got a proximal, proximal flange, stop it falling out early, called Archimedes, after Archimedes screw, that sort of screw type structure to the, uh, the stent to allow bile or pancreatic juice to flow around. Okay, in a nice position there. It's got external flanges. And uh, screen please, come back with a wire. And that we are. Okay, nice, uh, nice stent in place. Um, that will prevent uh, any mischief with those little stone fragments dropping out over the next day or two and, and causing any obstruction. Okay, so we're all done. Thank you very much.